And then how about leaky gut? We call that gut permeability or leaky gut, and it means the loss of tight connections in the cells of the gut because there's a barrier there. And actually, we don't just talk about leaky gut now. We talk about leaky brain, dementia, cognitive issues, leaky kidney, leaky gut. Um, so all of the organs in the body that have these membranes that separate, you know, have, have a separation, we're finding that there may be actually leaky changes in a number of those membranes, not just the gut. So once this happens, if, if we've eaten something and we haven't fully digested it, if that gut barrier is leaky, we will be absorbing things that we shouldn't be absorbing, and then the immune cells can become activated. So this is just a little diagram. See, on the left are the tight junctions, those normal tight junctions. But if those break apart there and there's leaky stuff, these undigested food particles can pass through. And then right down here are the immune cells, blood vessels, and lymphatics. So we start this inflammatory process here. So what causes this for a lot of people? Gluten. Gluten is a hot topic. I, I, you know, it seems like 90% of people now think they are gluten sensitive or avoiding gluten, and the gluten-free industry is huge. Um, it, it, gluten, you know, certain whole grain products are good for the gut, actually. They help gut bacteria, but for a lot of people, gluten is an issue, and gluten does tend to break apart those tight junctions. If we have infections or harmful bacteria, that can lead to gut permeability. If we don't have that biodiversity, those organisms keep themselves in check there, and they help to keep everything in balance. Salt, sugar, and alcohol, excessive salt, we think can cause changes in gut permeability. Environmental toxins, drugs, stress. So there's a lot of things that we think are converging to create these changes. And then once that happens, and you start that inflammatory process, remember most of the immune system, 70% of the immune system lies right outside that, that gut barrier. And so when that gets activated, and you have all of these inflammatory molecules created and then antibodies get created, we can end up with inflammatory bowel disease, other autoimmune diseases, allergies, asthma, acne, obesity, diabetes, fatty liver. We're considering all of these, many of the chronic illnesses that we deal with now in primary care probably related to what's going on at the gut level.